Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to share a couple of minutes and discuss an interesting case out of the field of pediatric neuroradiology. My name is Thierry Huisman. I'm the radiologist in chief in Edward B. Singleton Chair of Radiology at Texas Children's Hospital and Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, United States of America. The case I would like to share with you is about a nine year and eight month old girl who presents with a slowly progressive scoliosis and back pain. The reason for imaging was that you would like to rule out a spinal cord lesion, in particular, a syrinx or a spinal cord tumor. And indeed, there is a significant levoscoliosis of this child. So imaging, first of all, T2 rate imaging shows a T2 hyperintense lesion, which appears to expand most of the thoracic spinal cord and possibly superior and inferior to this lesion. This is a widening of the central canal. Next imaging, definitely widening of the central canal below this more T2 hyperintense lesion. On the follow-up T1 pre and post contrast imaging, indeed a T1 hypointensity of the initially T2 hyperintense lesion with a matching strong contrast enhancement. So is this a syringe for hydromyelia, an acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, is this an ependymoma or possibly an astrocytoma or maybe something completely different? Now, I would go for something completely different. I do not know if you really checked the posterior fossa, maybe it went too fast, but there is something going on over there, some T1 hyperintensity or contrast enhancement. So, could this maybe also be a K1 malformation, a Roman cephalosynapsis? a brainstem lesion or metastasizing neoplasm. Now, this is most likely a metastasizing neoplasm based upon this lesion in the spinal cord, but also the multifocal lesions seen here outlining part of the brainstem and cerebellum. On the axial T2 and T1 post-contrast imaging, we see within the cranial fold, indeed, multifocal T2 hyperintense lesions in the posterior fossa, as well as here within the area of the lateral ventricles. Furthermore, definitely leptomeninge enhancement, also some enhancement of these T2 hyperintense lesions. On the fusion rate imaging, the lesion within the lateral ventricles appears ADC, bright or increased diffusion. Now, the final diagnosis is adult, a disseminated oligodrendoglial like leptomeningeal tumor also known as diffuse leptomeningeal oligodrendoglyomatosis. This is a rare spinal cord neoplasm of childhood, typically within the first five years of life, characterized by extensive dissemination to the leptomeninges of the spine and brain. And you can have also interparenchymal contrast enhancing lesions. The key to diagnosis is the identification of the presence of small lesions along the surface of the brain and spine you typically, you need a meningeal biopsy to confirm the final diagnosis, and this is typically low grade. Differential diagnosis outside of neoplasm includes granulomatose or infectious conditions, so as a tuberculous meningitis, but also neurosarcoid, fungal meningitis, and leptomeningeal carcinomatosis from a primary brain tumor. In the early phase, you will see small cysts to hyperintense, typically along the fissures of the posterior fossa or within the basal cisterns. In advanced cases, you will see thousands of these kind of T2 hyperintense lesions along the cerebellum firmus, but also along the spinal cord, typically slowly progressive course. The same child again, you see now that on follow-up, there was also leptomeningeal enhancement outlining here the conus medullaris, and we still saw, of course, the primary tumor, which was really uh, contrast enhancing. Also, the lesion within the cranial fold were increasing. You see this got bigger, T2 hyperintense. The amount of enhancement increased as well as the leptomeningeal enhancement, now all the way outlining here part of the parietal lobe. Differential diagnosis I mentioned before, think about astrocytoma, typically low grade, bilocystic, is eccentric location within the spinal cord because the white matter is eccentric in the spinal cord and typically infiltrative. 
or the pendimoma, case over here, is more centrally located. It is expensile and originates from the pendimal lining outlining the central canal, for that reason, central. An acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, autoimmune disease, typically post-infectious, where you see multifocal areas of demyelination, T2 hyperintense, may have some faint enhancement, but typically not very expensile, especially if you correlate it with the extension of the sacral abnormality. And always think about the KR malformation. If you have a KR malformation which obstructs the normal CSF flow at the level of the cranial cervical junction, the central canal may dilate and may mimic some kind of a tumor. Here, post decompression collapse of the central canal. It may be very severe, multifocal, or, for example, carry to very extensive. So the morale of this case, always look at the periphery of the image and always be prepared for the unexpected. Thank you very much and hope to see you next year again in Davos. Thank you very much.